Ever wonder why a spoonful of fermented cabbage could help you fend off winter colds without pushing your immune system into overdrive? Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Today, we're looking at how kimchi, a traditional Korean fermented vegetable dish, can help your immune cells recognize threats more effectively while keeping reactions balanced. I'm Ethan Foster, and we'll unpack new research that mapped these effects cell by cell. I'm Alara Sky. Kimchi is typically Napa cabbage salted to draw out moisture, then mixed with garlic, ginger, red pepper flakes, scallions, radish, and a small amount of fermented seafood like anchovy or shrimp sauce. Packed into jars and left to ferment at cool temperatures, it becomes a living food rich in lactic acid bacteria and bioactive compounds. Let's go straight to the science. A recent study used single-cell RNA sequencing after 12 weeks of daily intake to see how individual immune cells shifted. 13 overweight but otherwise healthy adults were assigned to placebo naturally fermented kimchi powder or starter fermented kimchi powder. Afterward, researchers profiled their circulating immune cells one by one. Those measurements pointed to antigen-presenting cells, monocytes and dendritic cells, as a key target. These cells raised activity of CIITA, the master controller for MHC, class II proteins that display foreign fragments to the immune system. In practical terms, you enhance the show and tell that helps your immune system recognize what needs attention. The pathway behind that change involved interferon gamma signaling through JAK slash STAT, 1 to CIITA. That cascade leads to more MHC class II on cell surfaces meaning better presentation of antigens to T-cells. The study also ran lab assays. Dendritic cells exposed to kimchi extracts took up more antigen and displayed more MHC class II, confirming functional improvements, not just gene readouts. Downstream, CD4 plus T-cells matured more efficiently into both effector cells that coordinate defense and regulatory T-cells that prevent overreaction. That dual response matters. You want better vigilance without tipping into runaway inflammation. Notably, other major populations, CD8 plus T cells, B cells, and NK cells, remained stable, which points to targeted tuning rather than blanket stimulation. Both fermentation approaches helped with nuances. Starter fermented kimchi showed stronger interferon gamma responsive gene activation in vitro, while spontaneously fermented kimchi produce slightly greater effects in specific immune subsets in vivo, possibly due to a broader range of metabolites that form during natural fermentation. Either way, the pattern was a more responsive yet balanced immune profile. Beyond immune modulation, the evidence links kimchi to meaningful metabolic shifts. In a 12-week clinical trial, participants consuming kimchi powder reduced body fat and improved cholesterol markers lower LDL and triglycerides with higher HDL, while the placebo group gained weight and body fat. These changes suggest better metabolic resilience alongside immune benefits. Your gut microbiome is part of that story. Regular kimchi intake increased acromangia mucinifila, associated with healthier microbial communities and lower obesity risk, and reduced proteobacteria, which correlates with metabolic dysfunction. Acromangia also stimulates mucin production, strengthening the protective layer along your intestinal lining that influences immune signaling and barrier integrity. Fermentation adds another layer through short-chain fatty acids. As bacteria digest the vegetable fibers in kimchi, they produce butyrate, propionate, and acetate. These fuels support colon cells, modulate immune responses, and participate in gut-brain communication. That link may explain findings that fermented foods like kimchi help reduce symptoms of depression and insomnia through shifts in neurotransmitter-related pathways. Kimchi delivers nutrients too, vitamins A and C, minerals such as calcium, magnesium, and potassium, carotenoids like lutein and beta-carotene, and amino acids. 
fermentation increases the bioavailability of these compounds, making them easier for you to absorb. Its phytochemicals, including isothiocyanates and organosulfur compounds, also contribute to cellular defense and vascular support. Let's translate this into straightforward choices at the table. Choose unpasteurized kimchi kept refrigerated. Raw products retain live cultures central to the benefits we've discussed. Read ingredient lists and avoid unnecessary sweeteners, preservatives, or flavor enhancers. A clean, traditional recipe relies on fermentation for preservation and complexity, not additives. If fermented foods are new for you, start small. A teaspoon alongside meals is a good entry point, then gradually increase as your gut adapts. Consistency beats sporadic large servings. Steady exposure to live cultures and fiber is how you build momentum. You can keep it simple in meals. Use kimchi as a side with meats, fish, eggs, or roasted vegetables. Spoon some over white rice, fold it into scrambled eggs, or add it to wraps. Even small amounts add tang and provide continuous exposure to beneficial metabolites and microbes. There's room to explore styles. Napa cabbage kimchi, beichu, is the classic. But radish versions like kakdugi offer a crisp texture and different flavor. Rotating varieties exposes you to a wider array of bacterial strains and bioactives while helping you find your preferred taste. For home cooks, making your own fermented vegetables gives you full control over ingredients and time. With organic produce, clean jars, and filtered water, you can ferment safely and economically. Packing vegetables tightly and ensuring they stay submerged allows the natural process to create a diverse, living food. A few common questions help set expectations. Daily intake aligns with traditional use and with the research design. If your immune system is weakened, talk with your clinician before adding raw fermented foods. Store-bought options can be effective if they're raw and refrigerated. Pasteurized, shelf-stable versions lack live cultures. And if you heat kimchi, expect the live probiotics to be lost, even though nutrients and some fermentation-derived compounds remain. Here's today's challenge. Add one teaspoon of raw, unpasteurized kimchi alongside a meal each day this week, read the label to confirm live cultures, and note any changes in digestion or meal satisfaction. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.